Good morning, everybody. Glad to see you here this morning. I'm Donna Lacey, the president of United Women in Faith. And today is United Women in Faith Sunday here at Susanna Wesley. So all it, the service is going to be provided to you by members of our group and by Holly Trapley. So we're happy to have her. I'm delighted you chose to spend part of your day with us here at Susanna Wesley. Our women's organization has had a name change in, back in March. It had been United um, Methodist Women, and now it's United Women in Faith. So we're still learning to make the, the change. And it's, it's stayed the same, except that it's got some new programs, um, a, new, a new look, and then a new website as well. We, ref we still remain the official um, women's organization of the United Methodist Church, though. And our focus is still the same. We are driven by God's love, um, and we have a focus on women, children, and youth. So at this time, if you are a member of uh, United Women in Faith, or you were a member of United Methodist Women, or as Nidra, she's been a member of several women organizations in the church, I would love for you to stand so the congregation can recognize you at this time. Okay, thank you. At the beginning of our worship service, we pause to welcome our neighbors. So if you're online, would you please leave a comment with your name and where you might be worshiping from today? And if you're here in the worship center, will you please look around, find someone you might not know as well or with whom you aren't as familiar, and go up to them and introduce yourself and say, I'm so glad you're here to worship. So greet your neighbors. You can remain standing. Yeah. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The risen Christ is with us. We are Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church. We aspire to be a Christian community where all people grow in their love of God, a force for good in Topeka and the world beyond. We seek to live as disciples of Jesus Christ. We connect with God and our neighbors through spiritual practices to worship, study, serve, give, and share. All people are welcome with no exceptions. You can be who you are, you can be any way you are, and you are loved. God speaks to us through words and music. I invite you to continue standing and join in singing our opening song.
invite you to join me as we go to God in prayer. Will you pray with me this morning? God, you have called us, the lost, the least, and all who long for a home to worship you. You call us even when we wander from the path chosen for us and waste the gifts you give us. You call and welcome us back to worship this day. Fill us with celebration and joy in your presence as we honor you. In your holy name, amen. Listen to God's word for us from the Old Testament, a reading from Jeremiah 4, 11 through 12, 22 through 28. At that time, this people in Jerusalem will be told, a blistering wind from the bare heights, it rages in the desert toward my people, not merely to winnow or cleanse. This wind is too devastating for that. Now I, even I, will pronounce my sentence against them. My people are foolish. They don't even know me. They are thoughtless children without understanding. They are skilled at doing inept instead of doing right. I looked at the earth and it was without shape or form. As the heavens, I'm sorry, at the heavens and there was no light. I looked at the mountains and they were quaking. All the hills were rocking back and forth. I looked and there was no one left. Every bird in the sky had taken flight. I looked, and the fertile land was a desert. All its towns were in ruins before the Lord, before his fury. The Lord proclaims the whole earth will become a desolation, but I will not destroy it completely. Therefore, the earth will grieve, and the heavens grow dark, because I have declared my plan and will neither change my mind or cancel the plan. Join with me for our responsive reading, which is Psalm 14. Uh, I will, will read the light print, and if you will respond with the dark print. Fools say in their hearts, there is no God. They are corrupt and do evil things. Not one of them does anything good. The Lord looks down from heaven on humans to see if anyone is wise, to see if anyone seeks God but all of them have turned bad. Everyone is corrupt. No one does good, not even one person. Are they dumb? All these evildoers devouring my people like they are eating bread but never calling on the Lord? Count on it. They will be in utter panic because God is with righteous generation. You evildoers may humiliate the plans of those who suffer, but the Lord is their refuge. Let Israel's salvation come out of Zion. Jacob will rejoice when the Lord changes his people's circumstances for the better. Israel will celebrate. The New Testament reading is from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me strength because he considered me faithful. So he appointed me to ministry, even though I used to speak against him, attack his people, and I was proud. But I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and without faith. Our Lord's favor poured all over me along with the faithfulness and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is reliable and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, 
and I'm the biggest sinner of all. But this is why I was shown mercy, so that Christ Jesus could show his endless patience to me, first of all. So I'm an example for those who are going to believe in eternal life. Now to the king of the ages, to the immortal, invisible, and only God, may honor and glory be given to him forever and always. Amen. Will you please stand with me as you are able for our gospel reading this morning, which comes from Luke, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Listen for God's word today and how it will speak to you. All the tax collectors and sinners were gathering around Jesus to listen to him. The Pharisees and the legal experts were grumbling, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. And Jesus told them this parable. Suppose someone among you had 100 sheep and lost one of them. Wouldn't he leave the other 99 in the pasture and search for the lost one until he finds it? And when he finds it, he is thrilled and places it on his shoulders. And when he arrives home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Celebrate with me because I found my lost sheep. In the same way, I tell you, There will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who changes both heart and life than over 99 righteous people who have no need to change their hearts and lives. Or what woman, if she owns 10 silver coins and loses one of them, won't light a lamp and sweep the house, searching her home carefully until she finds it. And when she finds it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Celebrate with me, because I found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, joy breaks out in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who changes both heart and life. May God add a blessing to the reading to the hearing, and to the understanding of Scripture. You may be seated. It is a joy for me to be with you today. For those of you who do not know me, I am Holly Tapley. I am a a deacon in full connection with the Great Plains Annual Conference, and my appointment is the disaster response coordinator. So um, that is why you do not see me a lot. I am uh, on the road more than I am in Topeka. But it is a joy to be here this morning. Um, I guess my my second compassion after disasters would be uh, being able to preach, even though I am not an elder. But as part of uh, being a deacon, we also proclaim the word of Christ. And there is nothing closer to my heart than being able to proclaim Christ. Let me also say that we were unable to locate the, the small microphones today. So that is the reason why we are here in the lectern side. So uh, if any of you on this side want to move over, feel free to. Uh, I understand that. But uh, we're just glad to be together today as we worship in spirit and in truth. Several weeks ago, when I uh, first broke my foot, I searched my house high and low for the walking boot that I had used several years ago on the other foot. If you ever, yeah, if you ever need any orthopedic equipment, I got everything you need. <clears throat> Even now, I have a scooter, uh, so you are willing to borrow it. But I looked in boxes that are still unpacked from moving here in 2018. Yep, one of those. I went in the garage. There's boxes in the garage that I still have not even brought into the house to unpack. 
I went through those boxes. I went back into the bedroom to where all the boxes of books are. I went through all of those. I went down to the basement, even though there's only a bed and a table and a TV down there. But I still thought, well, maybe, maybe it's there. I was fussing, cussing. Yep, I admit it. Uh, <clears throat> because I knew that boot was there. And I, I remembered it clearly. I'd used it, uh, but I couldn't find it. So, you know, it being def de deflated, there it was. No rejoicing to be had, especially knowing that I was going to have to go buy another one. And I especially was deflated when the insurance company denied the payment of it. <sighs> no joy. Yet it might have been a different story if I could have found it, if I could have immediately put it on and grabbed my walker or my crutches or my cane or whatever, but that not being the case, I was hobbling around the house, grumbling at the dog who was looking at me like, I know you're crazy, but you know, this has got to stop. I couldn't figure out in all the noise that was going on in my mind and in my heart about a boot, I could not figure out where it could be. My wandering around and the noise of everything going on was probably nothing like the noise of the Pharisees and the legal experts. Did you, did you catch what they said in the gospel reading? This man, Jesus, this man, Jesus, welcomes sinners, and he eats with them. How dare he go out? How dare he go out to people who are not like us? How dare he go out to people who are called sinners and lost? He's supposed to stay in the midst and in the mission and in our inner circle. How dare he? In the midst of the noise, Jesus begins to tell a story and then another story. He gathers the crowd and the eavesdroppers to whom he is really talking. And he says, suppose someone among you had 100 sheep and lost one of them. Wouldn't you leave the other 99 in the pasture and search for the lost until you find it? Now, can't you hear the noise again? Can't you hear the mumblings again? Leave 99 just to go find one? Has this man lost his ever-loving mind? What is he saying? I got 99. Why do I need this one? But yet in my heart and in my mind as a Christ follower, I see the shepherd instead. I see the shepherd as he's walking around and walking around and looking and probably calling that sheep by name because I bet that beloved sheep has a name. And he goes and he looks and he looks and then he goes back to the 99 and he's counting. It's like when I used to be a youth director and we'd go places, I was constantly counting heads. Have I still got every one of them? Please tell me I got every one of them. And I can see the shepherd doing that, counting the head. Oh, still 99. Still 99. But then, you know, I, I think I'll go one more time. And the shepherd goes out, and the shepherd begins to look, and here comes the lost sheep. Can't you see it? I can imagine that both are probably running towards one another, and, and maybe even a happy embrace there. Because, yeah, it's a sheep, but it's a beloved sheep. 
The sheep's probably hungry, the sheep's thirsty, and the shepherd cares for the, the needs. Before the shepherd picks up the now found sheep and places on his shoulders, I can just picture the joy that was in his eyes as he carried it home. And then we hear, hear the shepherd say to the family and the friends and those along the way, come celebrate with me. I have found my lost sheep. Come on, we're going to have a party. We're not eating the sheep. But come on and, and be a part of our party because what was lost is now found. In the noise of our lives, when we are tending to our needs, Jesus reminds us that our relationship with him is not passive. Jesus is saying to us, saying to me and you today, in the same way I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who changes both heart and mind than over 99 righteous people who have no need to change their heart or lives. And the second story is this is like that of the first. The woman, if she, you know, owns 10 silver coins and loses one of them, you know, lights a lamp and sweeps the house carefully until she finds it. And she, like the shepherd, makes a big deal of celebrating that that which was lost is now found. And the picturing of the people celebrating with the woman over her, her found coin and the noise that has taken place, Jesus again says to those standing around, in the same way I tell you, joy breaks out in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who changes both heart and life. I have decided, that's scary when I've decided something, but I have decided that the noise of life has taken over each and every one of us. Not just here, those listening today on YouTube and, and everybody else in the world. I've just decided the noise of life has just taken over and it has closed our ears to what we really need to be hearing. It has closed our, our eyes to what we really need to be seeing. We've become the deaf and we've become the blind because of the noise that is taking place. The noise has become more important than the one who has given us this life and made us in his image. But through these two stories and in many other stories that we read in the Gospels, Jesus seems to be suggesting a different approach to us, a different understanding, a different relationship. You know, we're pretty content with the 99, aren't we? We've all gotten pretty content, myself included, with the 99. Why, you know, why do I need to, to go find that one? We're pretty content with life. But Jesus is calling us to a different relationship. If you hear those words, in the same way I tell you, joy breaks out in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who changes both heart and life. So that's it. That's the key to the lost sheep or the lost coin. It's a different relationship that Jesus is calling us to. Jesus is calling us to go and seek to go and seek, 
Now that's hard work. It is hard work. But yet we're given the work to do. If we take this upon us, as we have said when we made the vows into the church to support it with our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and share, share. We, we've taken those vows to share. We're seeking with joy. We're seeking something precious, something essential. And when we find those that we are seeking, we celebrate, we rejoice, Jesus says. That the information that Jesus wants us to, to, to be sent out and to go is, is a different way of life for us in 2022. In the 60s and in the 70s, when I was growing up, it was expected for us to be at church. I mean, the preacher expected you to be there. Your Sunday school teacher expected you to be there. Your neighbors expected you to be there. And because all the family came to the same church, all the aunts and the uncles and the grandmamas and the granddaddies were all expecting you to go there and be there. And co-workers of my dad was expecting us to be there and vice versa. And I can tell you that by the time my father got home at 5.15 on the dot on a Monday afternoon, we knew why this family was not at church on Sunday. It's because someone was sick. Or we knew why this family was not at church on Sunday because their, their, their father died. It was part of that Christ living to know what was taking place with one another within our community of faith. It's just the way we did it. My paraphrasing of verse 7, there will be more joy and celebration over the changing of the head and the heart of one sinner than of the 99 who think we're the perfect, God-loving, Christ-living disciple of Christ. Stings, doesn't it? Christianity is not a private way of life. You remember in Matthew 28, verse 19, that we can all say with our eyes closed and backwards and forwards and up and down, when Jesus gives us the authority to go into the world and to make disciples of Jesus Christ. We cannot go into the world to make disciples of Jesus Christ unless we are a disciple. Unless we are a community of faith. Today, Jesus is calling us for that different relationship. One that seeks out another. It will call us to invest time that is required and that is needed to seek out the lost and just someone who is not in attendance at church. Maybe it will call out for us to just to really get to know the person sitting next to us. How many of us are the one? who seeks. The Episcopal Church, a couple of months ago, held a survey, uh, conducted it with 3,119 individuals 18 years up. And here was the results given of just one question. 48% of mainline Protestants consider their relationship with Jesus private. 48% of us consider our relationship with Jesus Christ as private. 8% of those 3,118 people 
said it was public. public. And 9% said they have no relationship with Jesus Christ. 48% says it's a public thing. Matthew 28 says to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Story after story that Jesus told us. Go and find the one sheep. Go and find the one coin. We watch Jesus as he goes through the towns and the villages, and he has compassion and he has care for those who are troubled and need help. No wonder our churches are not full. And I'm not just saying United Methodists, but I'm saying across the, the, the spectrum. No wonder we have empty seats, that we struggle for finances. I always like when I go to another church to preach, is asking the pastor, when's the last time you baptized an adult? When's the last time you had people join your congregation? And I don't do that out of meanness, but I do that because it's passion to my heart that Jesus has given us the authority to go into the world and to make disciples. We need the community. We need one another. But somewhere along the way, and I'm, I'm guilty, those of us who teach and preach, we lost, we lost the authority. We lost the authority, and, I, and I, take, I take my responsibility. In Christian education, in the mid-90s, when, when soccer practice started on Sunday mornings at worship time, and I remember to this day, because it haunts me, I was in the church parking lot talking to a family who was leaving early worship, and they said to me, you will not see us in Sunday school anymore because soccer practice begins at 10 a.m., and we're going to soccer practice instead of Sunday school. And it haunts me because I didn't have a conversation about the priority there. I just kind of ducked my head and let them go. But somewhere along the way, those of us sitting in the pews, we didn't hear that being the church means going out and seeking the lost and others to come and join us. It is hard work. Again, we hear the words of Jesus from verse 7. In the same way I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who changes both heart and life than over 99 righteous people who have no need to change their heart and lives. So you asked, how do we begin to do this? How do we begin to seek the lost? How do we begin to seek those who are not here? How do we we seek out that person that we know but we really don't know? Three things. You know, we got to have three points. Our starting point is answering the question, how is it with our personal soul? How is it with your soul, John Wesley would ask. So how is it with your soul? Is there a deep connection with God? Second thing is in Matthew 11, 28 through 30, the message version, we hear these words from Jesus. Walk with me. And work with me. Watch how I do it. Learning on the job can't get any easier than that. 
And the third thing is, is accepting that authority from Jesus that was given to us in Matthew 28. There's more joy over one than over 99. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. John Paul. I'm supposed to say something about the myth that we're about to say. I don't know how she came up with such a perfect myth to fit what she just said. <laughs> Think about the first line. Jesus, Jesus, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have in need. Neighbors near, neighbors far. Many different kinds of neighbors. Would you please stand and join me in singing Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> We have several upcoming events, and the first one is today. John Paul will be leading the uh, youth, or I'm sorry, the adult and the children with the Bells uh, first get together this evening at five. You bet. Yes, youth and adults at 5:30. Is that correct? Okay, good enough. And then, um, oops, here we go. I'm in the wrong spot. Uh, the 14th of September, there's going to be a kitchen cleanup here, and Bonnie Totten is in charge of this. Bonnie's back in the back. If you would like to come and help, I know we'd love extra help. So that starts at 11.30, 9, 9 o'clock. Ooh, 11.30 will be over with, won't it? <laughs> Don't come at 11.30. And she will be providing a small lunch. And if you are interested in coming, let Bonnie know, so you might catch her after church. Um, one other thing we've got on the 21st, actually two other things. Another thing on the 14th is an intergenerational discipleship kickoff. 
And I'm not sure, is Becca in here, what time that actually starts? Does anybody know about that? Uh, Amy, do you know? <laughs> I know. I, I was going to say, if you get the email from Andrew. 6.30. 6.30. Okay, thank you, thank you. On Wednesday also. And then the chosen study will start at 6.30 the following Wednesday, which is uh, September the 21st. And that's also at 6.30 here at the church. But also at 6.15 on the 21st will be United Women in Faith. So we've got lots of things coming up on the calendar. Anybody else have anything that they can remember? Yes. Each year, the United Women in Faith recognizes someone from our community here at Susanna Wesley for their support of missions. Missions are very important to the United Women in Faith, and we are looking at missions for women, children, and youth. This year, we'd like to honor Jennifer Labruska. Jennifer, would you come forward, please? Jennifer, we're honoring you for your many efforts with children and youth at our church. Um, if you're like me and you've been here for a while, you may remember a few years ago when Jennifer was telling us about children's missions, um, she would ask, say that the kids were counting light bulbs or they were counting shoes or they were counting whatever in their homes and then they'd bring a nickel or a dime or a quarter to share so that those dollars could go to children who are less fortunate than, than they were. So there's lots and lots of different um, children's and youth missions that Jennifer has worked on here at the church over the years. Um, they've made blankets, they've um, done a lot of things that have helped over at Aldersgate, including putting May baskets on doors, which we all really appreciated, was lots of fun during COVID especially. And last year, she dreamed up this You Bake It sale, because they couldn't have a bake sale. So they put all the stuff in a jar, and then we bought the jars, and we took them home, and we baked them ourselves. So there have been lots and lots of different things that Jennifer has done with Zoe and lots of different children's missions. This year, she worked with the youth, and this was a lot of work. And I was here. There were other people who were working on that, too, but that garage sale was a lot of work. And Jennifer was here, and she was doing a lot of work, and we really appreciate that. And then, that wasn't enough. She went with the kids on that youth mission trip, which, that's no small task. And so that's really something that we appreciated, too. And I know that Jennifer's been a Girl Scout leader here for a number of years, and so we've appreciated all the things that, that you've done with our youth and our children through the years, and we really appreciate you. Thanks for all your help. Let's give her a round of applause. I love it when people serve Christ. Thank you for your service to the church and to our community. So worship is one of the five spiritual practices that help us grow as followers of Jesus Christ. And our invitation as a community is to worship, study, serve, give, and share to put God's love into action in our everyday lives. And so today we lift up serve, which we do independently because of who we are as a disciple and what we do as a community together. I invite you to serve um, in some way five times a day. Uh, and then I invite you to serve as part of our community here at Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church. As we serve, we are the hands and feet of Christ. 
making a difference in the world. So I invite you to serve this week. Now we want to go to a time of prayer. I will lead us through um, some sentence prayers, giving you a little time to be able to respond to each if you would like. You may pray with your eyes closed. You may pray with your eyes open as you see the needs of the people who are running through on the screen. May we uh, come to God. And as we do and as you reflect, remember we have the candles that are down front that if you would like to come and light a candle uh, for someone or for specific prayer request, invite you to do so during this time. Let's begin with just a few moments, a few space of quiet prayer. Let us pray. Oh, most patient God, we recognize how much we need you for life. How often have we behaved as if we did not know or even care about you? Often have we become the ones who do not carry out justice. How often have we tried to dominate others even as we stand with them? How often have we participated in desolating your creation by our treatment of the heavens, the earth, and its waters? Forgive us for these times when we have lost our way. Oh, loving God, we want to be among those whom you seek. Shower your mercy upon us. Find us and lead us safely home to faithfulness. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I want to invite you this morning to check in and let us know that you're present here. You can do so by the church app. Um, if you do not have the, the church app located, downloaded, uh, I would uh, encourage you to do so. It is so easy. You can give that way. You can check in. You can see other things that are happening in the life of the church. There are also connect cards in the pews. You can uh, fill those out. Take those to the welcome table as uh, you exit today and place them there as a sign of your attendance here. Guests, we are honored that you are with us. We thank you that you have chosen to be a part of the worship at Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church today. If you are watching online today, thank you. Thank you for making that choice. And we pray God's blessing upon each of you. Guest, if you are here, uh, I would just like to get to, to, to know you following uh, worship this morning. If I'll kind of hang out down front if you will come and introduce yourself to me. And for those of you who are watching online, go to Facebook Messenger and find my name and just shoot me a message and let me know that you are worshiping with us today. We appreciate you being here. Our invitation for our ministry giving, uh, I invite you. I invite you to support our ministry funding. You can text any dollar amount to 84321 using the Church Center app. 
You can place your offering in the basket at the welcome table. You can drop your check or donation off by the church during the week. But thank you for your generosity. One of the things that we vow to do as United Methodists is to give extravagantly to the ministry of Jesus Christ. So whatever method that you use, we invite you and, and, and I thank you for giving and being part of the ministry that takes place. During uh, John Paul's uh, vocal arrangement for us today, I invite you to just reflect upon ways that you can give, whether it's prayers, presents, gifts, service, and share. Amen. I invite you to join me as we go to God in prayer. Will you pray with me? God of relentless love, the gospel reminds us of the joy you feel when one of your children chooses the path of repentance and redemption. We picture the celebration in your heart when we make that choice. We also know how prone we are to wander off that path as we pursue those things that satisfy ourselves only. Receive the gifts we offer this day as a sign of our striving to get back on the way that leads us to you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the light of our way, who teaches us to pray together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen as we begin to go forth today what a better hymn and do we have a story to tell to the nations 
Stand as you are able as we sing together. I send you forth this morning to find the one and to still care for the 99. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs> 